Greetings, hello and welcome back to some more lore of the Chosen Class Guides. And this time we're gonna take a look at the Assault Class. Um, and we're gonna start off with this spec that we have on the screen here, which is basically centered around the Killer Instinct uh, perk, which is a sergeant level perk here. Um, activating run and gun gives you plus 50% critical damage for the rest of the turn. So um, it's basically kind of laid out in a way to take most advantage of the perk. Um, let's let's clarify one thing about this uh, perk very quickly. So um, reading it like this, plus fifty percent critical damage. You might think, yeah, you you have a shotgun shot that shot does eight damage. You get plus four from your crit, plus fifty percent critical damage would then be two more, right? So you would end up at what fourteen. Um, that's not actually how it works. So, um, your st standard shot hits for 8, you get plus 4 from critical damage, that's 12. And then you take plus 50% damage off that whole shebang, and you end up at 18. So, this gives you a surprising huge damage boost. Um, so, it's uh, I think it could be clarified a little further that this 50% uh, affects your whole damage, not just the critical damage. So, the class class focus of the killer instinct assault is basically lots of damage output um, potentially single target damage output because then you're combining it with stuff like like rapid fire later on um, but also you can actually use it even early game like when you're sergeant rank what i sometimes do is trigger run and gun just to get killer instinct even if i don't need the mobility for my trench gun. Let's say I do a trench gun opening from concealment. I might just trigger run and gun to get the extra damage bonus on all the targets in my trench gun radius. But let's, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, so let's start with the Lens Corporal promotion. And uh, I like to joke that unfortunately at Lens Corporal there's only one talent and you always have to pick that talent. And that is Lightning Reflexes. Um, this is basically the talent choice you will see me pick for all assault specializations. Um, the reason is that it's the best and easiest way to deal with enemy overwatches. Now, um, keep in mind what I said in the introduction video to the class guides. I'm making these guides from my perspective and my play experience on Legend difficulty. Um, the chance for enemies to take reactions, both green alert and yellow alert reactions, scales with difficulty level. So on Legend, whenever you encounter new enemies, there's a high, very high chance that one or two enemies go into Overwatch. Um, so it kind of feels almost oppressive that you're constantly facing Overwatching enemies, even if you just activated a pot. So you need a way to deal with the Overwatch. There are too many enemies on the map that will go into Overwatch to deal with that with like flashbang grenades. So having one lightning reflexes dude or maybe two in the squad is just incredibly helpful. And that doesn't mean that the other perks are bad. Um, they're just way worse than lightning reflexes. So this is going to be the top pick for all, all um, specs. Yes, even when we're going to look at the um, stun gun spec. Um, later on, I still would pick Lightning Reflexes as the first choice. So, with that other way, Corporal Rank, um, Trench Gun. I was just mentioning Trench Gun as an opener from Concealment to, you know, wipe out the first group you encounter on a map. Positioning is a little bit tricky, since your Assault um, does have normal detection radius, like unlike, let's say, your Flamethrower Technical, who's probably carrying an SMG, has reduced detection radius, has an easier time getting close to the enemy with the assault. It takes a little bit of, I guess, guesswork or learning how enemies move to get into position, let the enemy then walk towards you, and then they're in range for a trench gun. So a little bit more tricky to use. There are situations where you can use it out of concealment, but it's not. it will not get value every single mission. So a more consistent but less flashy uh, version would be close and personal, getting an additional crit chance against enemies. This can be especially helpful to get your crit chance to 
for those killer instinct attacks because you know with killer instinct you want to be critting um, you stun a crit chance like when you go run and gun at an enemy stand next to them right you're gonna get 40 from a flank you're gonna get 20 crit chance from your weapon uh, shotguns have a base 20% crit chance if I'm not mistaken so then you're probably running with talon rounds that's another 10 so 70 um, you've got a superior laser sight on your weapon for another 10 so you're second at 80 and then close and personal can help bridge the gap to really get the reliable 100 percent there are other ways to get 100 percent to get some um uh a psyops mind merging with you um holo targeting from a holo targeting spec uh, sniper officer etc so there are ways to get 100 percent without close and personal but this is the more self-sufficient reliable way you can just gamble on the 80% crit because surely that's close to 100 that's gonna crit so yeah close personal solid second choice I'd, I'd say it also depends a little bit on your squad composition um, whether or not you have someone else there for that first concealment ambush on a mission like I might be overvaluing that but for me like wiping out the first part without much hassle and not spending too much time on that is always a big deal on guerrilla operations so i want to have a flamethrower technical um, a trench gun assault or maybe a biggest booms um boosted course needle grenadier like these are kind of the the free high damage opening to really just wipe out the first group keep on moving so the fourth option would have been the, the blade blade storm um opening but that doesn't work anymore Anyway, moving on. Um, if you go with Killer Instinct, more critical damage when activating Run and Gun. You want extra conditioning, reducing the cooldown by one turn. There's like no, no alternative here. That's something you want to pick up, for sure. Um, then coming to this Tech Sergeant rule. Now, um, Rapid Fire. Out of the three choices you have here, Rapid Fire is the only one that you can actually use on a turn where you run and gun. So with a class that's kind of built around Killer Instinct and run and gun, Rapid Fire seems like the obvious choice. But um, there is an argument to be made for Close Encounters. That argument is that a Killer Instinct critical hit with a shotgun is very, very often enough to one-shot even late-game enemies. Um, I had in previous campaigns uh, killer instinct assaults that would then like click a rapid fire, attack the enemy and the second shot literally never went off because all enemies were dead after the first shot. So um, in that case you might pick up close encounters to have some uh, additional, additional utility, additional firepower for the turns when you're not running gunning. Because even with even with extra conditioning, you're still looking at a what, three turn cooldown on run gun, so like three turns where you're not run gunning. And I think close encounters in generally is stronger than than rapid fire because you can uh, split your shots up on two different targets. It's a um, let's say personal preference. I don't think there's a really wrong choice in this case. I went with. Um, I went with rapid fire just to give my reasoning because I knew I would not be picking up lethal. More on that later. Um, so to maximize my damage output. Um, just a word quickly on hit and run. Hit and run is kind of a, an odd choice for a shotgun because um, yeah, you only get the effect on flank targets while close encounters gives it the effect on all targets within four range, fortile range. Sure, you have the range limitation, but with a shotgun you want to be kind of close anyway, right? Um, hitting a flank target from 12 tiles away is probably not going to happen for hit and run. So, I'm not a big fan of hit and run. It can work, though. Uh, gunnery Sergeant Roll. Now, if you are still on the I'm gonna crit and I want to maximize my damage, then you can select bring them on 
I just think that it's weaker than the other choices here, and you don't need that extra damage. Again, with the whole argument being that you're already doing insane amount of damage, and it scales kind of weakly. Um, there are situations where bring them on is really great. Um, you might consider it if you're going for a street sweeper build and you have like uh, Shadow Strike down here, so you're critting everything in that group that you're street sweeping. That's plus four damage on each target, probably, uh, if you're if you're well, up to plus eight. But do you really want to be this close in shotgun range if there are uh, 16 enemies active? Questionable. So my first choice here is always untouchable, because this kind of allows you to keep one enemy up who you can just tank with untouchable it's a bit of a defensive perk um, not really adding to your killing power but it it allows you really some fallback options um, also on other turns you just make sure you get a kill and you might even have then the assault stand out in the open to just bait out that one hit that one shot uh, from an, any high damage enemy that you couldn't kill, like an Andromedon, or maybe maybe even like the Chosen Hunter or something. Um, being able to, to soak one attack is really strong. Um, there's also an argument to be made for Close Combat Specialist. I honestly haven't um, played with that perk a whole lot. I know that um, a lot of other people really, really like that and the way it, it works, so I can't comment too much on it. The one thing um, I want to mention quickly though, if we look into the description, uh, let me just put these there. Um, it used to say that it only works on enemy turns. Um, I, th I guess they updated the description, I hadn't, hadn't noticed that. So it used to say it only works on enemy turns, but it also works on your own turn, so you could, in theory, use that to run in the middle of the enemy group, activate them, and then you take a shot at each one of them while they run away. So some additional utility there. It eats through your ammo, like no tomorrow though, and which is probably one of the reasons why I don't like taking it. For me, assaults always use an autoloader, uh, but with close combat specialist, you probably want an expanded magazine. Moving on to the final rank. First choice for me normally is lethal here. Um, again, maximizing the damage output on your killer instinct turns, on your rapid fire turns, um, plus two damage, plus one additional damage on crits, plus 50% of that then um, with killer instinct. That's a whole lot of damage. Making sure stuff dies. And then also triggering untouchable. For this specific soldier, I went with Street Sweeper um, simply because I had Ghost Walker as one of my XCOM perks. And being able to sneak closer to the enemies and getting that stealth ambush um, is a little bit sweeter than with Street Sweeper than it is with Trench Gun. It's a little bit redundant, pick and both, and I'm not sure if I would build this specific soldier that way again. Probably would opt for lethal and just be content with trench gun. Uh, I just wanted to give it a try in this specific campaign. Like when I'm using here soldiers from an actual life campaign, that's kind of the, the effects that you get that I might try something that not 100% represents what's, what's in the guide. And I hope that's okay. Um, what else are we going to look at? Uh, let's have a quick look at at stats, maybe. Um, for assaults, I don't have too many. Uh, like when I select my assault at the start of the game, I think 50 mobility is kind of the sweet spot where I want to be. More is better, less is not great, but can work. Um, health should be at least 4. You don't want to have a free health assault. But you can also make it with. Assaults have one of the biggest health progressions, so they get more health points with rank ups. So um, the starting health I wouldn't worry too much about because over the course of the game you get a lot of health just from armor also, so uh, you can work with that. Aim, I would probably say 60 should be your, your minimum number. 
um, you get, I want to say 40, but I think that was even buffed recently. Aim if you're in point blank range. I think it's 60 now with shotguns, point blank. So um, you can make up a lot of it with just being close to the enemy. Well, an ideal positive amount of dodge. Um, PCS choices. Uh, I think normally like, it, it's kind of depends. It's it's either a speed PCS if you have some to spare. They are in, in short supply and a lot of people want them. Um, or any defensive PCS because you're going to be the guy who's in front of the whole of the squad. The closest to many enemies and might take the most shots. So a defense PCS, a dodge PCS, although dodge I think first pick goes to the shinobis again um, maybe something like a smart macrophages so you don't have to worry about poison or if you're desperate an emergency life support if you constantly get your swords killed so they bleed out so um, yeah I, I would say speed is probably my first choice uh, then then defense um, Weapon weapon upgrades, as I said, this is for my assaults most of the time the standard auto loader laser sight suppressor because I don't need a third one, so I might as well use a suppressor. Um, auto loader over expanded mag mm. simply because in a turn you where you would reload with a normal loader. Um, you're kind of stuck in your current position, right? So you, you waste one action on the reload and then you're sitting there and you're probably not taking good long range shots with a shotgun. So a shotgunner should always be able to move closer to an enemy and shoot. That's why I prefer the autoloader. Uh, laser side, obviously you want to crit, right? No big, no big discussion to be had there. And well, yeah, the rest of the loadout. Beefy armor, the best shotgun. Um, Arc Floor you can update later, not a priority, I rarely use it and if I want to use it the one turn stun should be enough and then usually some sort of plating, well your best possible plating, um, some sort of vest, again for me I really like hazmats because then I can run through the fire of my, my flamethrowers, but um, nanoscale is always great because it reduces enemy chance to crit and I'd say there's a good argument also. Well, maybe not a good argument. I, I used to like tactical vests, um, which give you additional armor, but armor is a little bit weak since it doesn't apply to damage you take into your ablative. So by the time you, you, you need armor, uh, you're already uh, in trouble. And yeah, um, talent rounds, for me, I like it because I don't usually have uh, close and personal for the crit chance, so I need the crit chance from the talents. You can also work with any other damage increasing rounds um, if you don't worry about the crit chance, I'd say. And yeah, that's the, uh, that's the base assault here, uh, the killer instinct assault, and let's have a look at um, another variation. Right, in this uh, assault variation, um, you know, the very creative bottom row assault? I don't know. It's called it's called the breacher row, so I just went with that. I often personally refer to it more as a tanky assault. Um, and tanky pretty much just because picking up 45 and formidable makes you, you know, much more um, sustainable in these high, high risk turns where you run a gun into the enemy lines. Um, and just being able to also take a hit or two uh, with these kind of perks. So um, most of the stuff is pretty straightforward. Again, lightning reflexes, of course. Um, close and personal, you still want to be uh, have some some offensive potential. So extra crit chance is great. Trench gun, if you desperately need one more person who can open up on an enemy group, is, is an option, of course. Um, then, well, if we're not taking fortified formidable, then we're just, just gonna be another killer instinct assault, so no, it's a different spec here. Um, so, so fortified formidable um, is then the option. Um, close encounters or rapid fire, both valid choices. Again, since you're not 
constantly run and gunning, I think you get more value out of close encounters. I just just like it more because of the um, the option to shoot two different targets or shoot a target and then if the target is dead after the first shot already you can reload your weapon or move away again. Uh, just the ability to move up to an enemy, shoot them in the face and then move back again to the safety of your squad um, gives a lot of value to close encounters and to extend to hit and run but again hidden run has the limitations of you can't use it against unflankable enemies drones max chrysalids berserkers etc that's that's really why i always pick close encounters pretty much um untouchable versus close combat specialist rewind the video five minutes and listen what i said about it before it's the same thing applies here um, no much variation there and then lethal for more damage if you're desperate for an opening or have the right perks in the XCOM row for some AOE, Street Sweeper is there. It's, it's always an option. It's a little bit like uh, the situation like we had in the um, Assault, tr not Assault, uh, Gunner Tree, where there's a lot of good perks uh, in the tree itself. So a lot of, a lot of varied options that make sense and um, your XCOM row perks might swing you in one direction or the other. Um, yeah, so let's have a quick look here then. Not much difference uh, in terms of stats and and uh, equipment. So I, I know that the question will come, okay, what's at what point do you um, create a killer instinct assault? At what point do you create a, a breacher assault? And it's like, I don't know, the first one I get is Killer Instinct, the second one, just because I want some variety, is then a Breacher. You you can build all your swords to Killer Instinct, that's no problem whatsoever. Uh, like, if they have the right stats, it can work. Um, one factor might be, if I have higher mobility, I'm more likely to build a not Killer Instinct, because they can get more done without having run and gun right a lower mobility person might need run and gun to get to the enemy and a high mobility can get there without run and gun and get stuff done i think on this specific assault i also then combined it with some pistol perks um, to really take advantage of that that high mobility and you might also see a fairly unusual equipment setting here so let's advance speed pcs on top of all of that and in the loadout i'm using the icarus armor so this was really then an assault that would uh, jump drop into an enemy group unload a fan fire a regular pistol shot and then two shots with close and personal with the shotgun similar to what we're talking about with the shooty shinobi being able to dish out a lot of damage per turn um, the only downside being really that lethal, the plus two bonus damage, only applies to a primary weapon, doesn't apply to pistols. Like if you pick up center mass, then um, assaults are certainly another class that can benefit from pistols, but might not. You know, but with the high crit chance, um, a critting pistol is a good pistol. Um, the rest is pretty much the same as before. Uh, not much to say there. So I think with that we're gonna swing over to the stun gun assault. All right, coming to the stunner or stun gun assault. Um, I'm breaking a little bit here from my rule of I don't want to talk about classes that I'm not playing um, because I haven't built a stun gun assault well ever in Long War of the Chosen, um, I think. Oh, it's been a long while. Um, either way, I did play them in Long War 2. Two, yeah, I at least had one in every Long War 2 campaign I made. Um, the big reason was um, Chain Lightning used to be really, really nerfed, Chain Lightning being the Master Sergeant skill. Um, had a, received a huge nerf uh, you get getting minus 50 aim on all your shots with the chain lightning on every single target and it kind of made it completely useless. It was completely overpowered before but it's uh, a classical over nerf. 
as of yesterday or yeah yesterday two days ago whenever um, dev build 28 was released there's the new version now of chain lightning it uses a targeting similar to um, volt where you hit targets um, like you select a target and it hi uh, hits up to four additional targets within six tiles of the main target. Um, so you can no longer stun the whole map, what you could do with the old chain lightning and number two, but you no longer get the 50 aim penalty and you can still easily take, take stun out a big group of enemies. So I think chain lightning is viable again and that makes the whole um, stunner assault a viable option. Um, so, I've laid out the talents here a little bit in a way that if I'm going to go for a stun gun assault, that might also then be a rifle assault. Usually you would do that if you have high-ish aim and low-ish mobility. Since I didn't have a stun gun already, I just respect um, the soldier you saw before. So like even with a 13 mobility, I'd be okay with that and you could end up at Master Sergeant with around 90 aim for a good rifle assault. Um, just don't expect them to carry on the damage level as any other assault would, because rifles just inherently do less damage than shotguns. So what are we looking at? Stun chances. Clearly, um, as the stun gun row is in the middle, for the first pick you pick lightning reflexes, because this is the only viable pick, yada yada yada, check back 20 minutes ago, I'm not going to talk about this again. Um, there might be, but generally no. But maybe if you have dedication down there, but no, just take it, take, take, take line reflexes. But you at least disorient all your targets in chain lightning. No, take lightning reflexes. All right, moving on. Um, arc pulser allows you to also damage mechanical enemies uh, with your arc thrower. Um, you can live without it, but if you're already going all in on the arc thrower, might as well pick that up. Uh, it also has the added bonus that it is one way of reducing the hack defense of mechanical enemies. I think it's only mentioned in the advanced tooltip. Uh, reduce hack defense by 20. There are few sources of actually reducing hack defense and that's one of the um, ones that you will rarely have simply because you, or at least I, you know, either we're going for Killer Instinct or for other assaults, would not pick this up. Um, you can stack hack defense reductions from different sources, so having an additional source might be really strong if you ever want that full override on a sector bot. Which you probably won't get. Uh, anyway, moving on. Stun Gunner, bonus chance to hit on your, on your uh, arc thrower incredibly useful and kind of a necessity if you want to make chain lighting work in the end. So um, this is going to really make, um, give you a very high chance to stun rolls. Then we come in into three rows of no picks for your stun gun class. So um, since I was kind of thinking, yeah, probably a, a, a rifle assault if we're going for stun gunner, then crit is not that important because you don't get base crit chance, you don't get extra crit damage anyway, so might as well be a little bit more tanky. And with a rifle hit and run suddenly uh, actually makes sense, so we're picking up that. You could also definitely build a stun gun or a shotgun, in that case it would pick up aggression and then any of the other perks. That's totally up to you. Um, down here same thing we talked about before. I, I prefer untouchable. Close combat specialist with a shotgun, yeah. Um, with an assault rifle, definitely not. As an option. And then, of course, uh, I mean, the whole idea of building a stun gunner is to get chain landing, so no other options back here. Um, I'm looking forward actually to playing with the new chain landing. I don't think anyone has had any experiences yet considering it's been two days since the version is out um, so yeah um, that that might be useful and yeah that's pretty much it everything else stays the same um, I'm not gonna look at the loadout 
or any other stuff because I think that's pretty straightforward. Let's head over to the wiki and take a look at the XCOM rope perks and what I think about them and why you never want to see a granite perk again. Please can we just remove those? Anyway, I'll be back in a second. Alright, here we are um, looking at the XCOM rope perks that are available for the assault class. Um, I'm gonna go through the tier 4 perks because those are the most expensive one um, for every single one and comment on those and then cherry pick a few that are worth mentioning I think in the in the other rows so um, starting off here with disabling shot I think this is not worth the 40 AP for an assault um, simply because you already have your arc thrower and you can stun enemies um, Disabling shot basically just gives you a stun option against mechanical enemies that you can't hit otherwise. Um, so it's kind of very situational here. Um, that I don't think it warrants 40 points then. I think I mentioned before having it in more people is better. But again, not, not for 40 points. You have, a, you have an arc throw or anything organical you can stun anyway. So disabling shot, probably not worth it. Um, Implacable, nice to have if you have the if you're swimming in AP anyway and don't have any other good choices. Um, bonus mobility is always great, and um, you're already get, getting a lot of kills, probably if you're playing it right. Um, then being able to move to a safer position or you know to a more aggressive position um, could be an option. Combine it with something like the, the uh, close and personal, um, no, not close encounters. You shoot an enemy that's nearby, you kill them, you get a bonus move, you can move to another enemy and shoot them. Good choice. Uh, quick zap is for me a really strong pick for anyone, not just for the stun gunner assault, for any assault spec. Um, you get a free action stun. Um, which really then allows you um, to deal with three or four enemies in a single turn just by uh, running and gunning behind enemy lines or well, probably or running behind enemy lines, zapping one and then shooting two other targets with um, hidden well, with close encounters maybe with hit and run if you pick that um, maybe then also your pistol shots etc etc so quick zap definitely a good pick I think absolutely worth to pick up um, ready for anything, you automatically enter Overwatch after shooting. I'm not a big fan of shotgun Overwatch. You don't have a cool under pressure, so you're not going to crit anything. And if your Overwatch gets pulled by something at the edge of your vision, at 17 tiles range, you're going to look at the sub 20% hit chance. And it just wastes the ammo. So, um, probably not worth it. Now, if anyone says, yeah, just install. Um, install the, the PCS that only allows you to take overwatch shots uh, past a certain percentage then I'm gonna slap them because that's a waste of a PCS slot. Uh, we're not gonna in install fire control PCS just to make that work. No, 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 no. Um, serial probably um, very situational and, and I don't like spending 40 AP for something situational. Um, again, shotgun doesn't have an amazing range, and having enough targets in range of your shotgunner to make zero worth it seems like a once in a lifetime thing. Um, it's gonna feel awesome when you are in that situation, but most of the time it's just a button on your hotbar that you won't press. So, probably not worth 40. Stiletto, I'm kind of uh, unsure about. Um, being able to pierce free armor seems good, but just that, like, if you think you constantly need that, you probably have a bigger issue with uh, shredding in your squad. There are not that many enemies that have free or more armor, and those are probably enemies you want to be shredding anyway, so you might as well shred them first and shoot them then. So, um,. Yeah, kind of, kind of unsure about the Um That's close enough. Is to me a bad, a bad choice um, overall. You fire Acro automatically at an invisible enemy that moves or fires, changes, uh, moves or fires within one tile. So anyone who gets close to you, you pull out your Acro and stun them. 
um, that can just get eaten up by someone you are planning to, to let run into a untouchable anyway. Um, you might just not have it ready because your stun gun is on cooldown when you need it. Um, and if it then puts your stun gun on cooldown when you are planning to use it the following turn, that can also be an issue. I, I just, I'm giving up too much control over my abilities by picking this perk. Um, that's that's my thought on this. I haven't actually played with this perk yet. Just from the description, I, I was just shying away from it. If someone has some hands-on experience with that and can say, oh, it's the best thing since sliced bread, um, everything just gets stuns that moves close to you, then that's amazing, please let me know. Um, but just from the description, I don't think it's a good choice. All right. Um, anything that's grenade -y? Uh, if it's salvo or other stuff, I think is uh, not worth picking up. Exception is always the free grenades, free flashbang, free smoke. When you can get them, sure, pick them up. Um, any arc floor related perks, light, light lightning, um, seem like good for a stun gunner. I'm not sure with unlimited power though. Firing your arc floor no longer ends your turn. That seems only to be useful when you are in your starting position and you have a good position where you want to throw your arc floor. I feel like most of the time you're still going to be moving first and then arc throwing something and then unlimited power kind of has no value. Um, it seems questionable. There was a similar thing with, I think, for the for the ranger where they could use your their sort of shotgun, like it would no longer end your turn. It's like how often are you going to be starting in a position where you want to use that weapon? I think with a sort of, it's probably less useless, less, no, less useful. Uh, unlimited power might be occasionally still useful where you stun gun a berserker and then you run and gun somewhere else and shoot somebody else. So it's like if, you, if you're swimming in AP and have nothing else to spend them on, sure, pick it up. Um, zone of control good for any kind of, especially killer instant um, assaults that go in there. This might really be useful if you plan to go for close combat specialists, like um, getting lots of enemies into this five tile radius and then debuffing them at the same time. It seems good. Um, resilience absolutely worth a pickup. Almost crit immunity, absolute good to have. Um, what else? Um, reposition, probably. Um, again, it's it's limited to flanked or exposed targets with primary weapon. Although, the exposed should work on on berserkers, right? So, it's probably even better than uh, implacable in that regard. So, might be worth picking up. Um, then we have our our combo for openers. Like if you are like me and you like big numbers on your trench gun and street sweeper, then Ghost Walker and or Shadow Strike are your picks um, to really make make those abilities work. Ghost Walker to get in position, Shadow Strike to make sure everything hits and crits. So this is a strong combo. Um, if you if you basically if I see Shadow Strike, then I know I will st pick Street Sweeper later on. That's this kind of influences my perk choices. Um, and then again, I'm a, I'm a sucker for stealth openings. What can I say? And then if you also pick up Phantom, then it even makes sense to have multiple people on your team for stealth openings. Like the first pot gets taken out by your Shadow Strike Gunner, the second pot gets taken out by your Shadow Strike Assault. So, um, happy fun times. Um, lock and load is something that, again, would work really nicely, I think, with close combat specialist. Um, so running into the enemy group, taking shots on everyone that moves, and if you get a kill, you get ammo back, which really helps with the um, ammo cost of close and personal. Again, it costs two ammo per shot. You restore one ammo per kill. Um, the big dis downside is that just uh, close, um, not close and personal, close combat specialist. 
it can't crit because you don't have cool under pressure and we can't pick it up here so that kind of limits the whole thing um Lone Wolf is a good pick up because you will probably end up as an assault most of the time away from your squad, the 7 plus tiles, so that's just free defense, free aim. You don't necessarily need the aim though. Again, um, you might be with your shotgun always very close to an enemy and have 100% chance to hit. So, um, not an automatic first pick, but yeah, definitely worth picking up if you have, if you have leftover points. Um, anything else? Combat fitness. I think I if for every class so far I mentioned, hey, if I have combat fitness, fitness, pick it up. It's just a, it's an all around good package to have. It's just nothing bad about it, except that it costs thirty AP. Um, aim assist depends on your squad. If you consistently run with a holo targeter, then that's great to have. The question then is, do you need it? Do you need the additional aim and crit if you already have a holo targeter that gives you aim and crit? Considering the assault will probably be at close to the 100% crit anyway. Um, I guess that that's really then a decision you have to make uh, based on your squad setup. I briefly mentioned dedication before, as in, hey, can you skip light and reflexes if you have dedication on your XCOM role? Because um, you have a skill that allows you to ignore reaction fire. Now, the problem is, ignore reaction fire, that's like shadow step, um, where you just don't you don't trigger the reaction fire. The idea behind lighting reflexes is not just to not get hit by reaction fire, but also to trigger it so that the rest of your squad does not have to worry about the reaction fire anymore. So dedication kind of doesn't really help with that. Um, and in fact, it, it counteracts that because you ignore it, you no longer trigger it. True mobility is also not super much. It might be worth picking up if you're really kind of short on mobility or on the opposite end if you really want to stack mobility to ridiculous levels. But just be um, bear in mind that you no longer trigger reaction fire and then your squad might need some help dealing with those overwatches. So yeah, that's the assault for now. Um, we're gonna do the specialist next and then we're gonna go on to the hero classes. I know a lot of people have been waiting for those. I've been kinda uh, delaying them also because I wanted to see what other changes the later dev builds might uh, might have. There were a lot of changes now to the Reaper in Dev 28, so happy I didn't do a guide for them, which I would now have to redo. But they will come, they will come. Take some time, be patient. We'll see them in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.